Welcome in to Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Megan Payton. Today is our mailbag show. But before we get into the questions that you guys asked us, my question for you is who do you guys have winning this week four game? If you think Seattle's going to come up on top, go to the comments, type S-E-A. And if you think San Fran is going to unfortunately beat the Seahawks, that's okay. But go to the comments and type S-F. So in our mailbag show, we take the questions, the top questions that you guys asked in our community page. We're going to touch, react on all of those, and then you guys can give your responses. But don't miss out on our community page mailbags. We do them every week, so make sure you're getting your questions in and we do not leave you out. Our first one is coming in from Batman Fan 20 Batman. He is a loyal participant in the mailbag, I must say. We use a lot of his questions. He says, Geno Adkins is still out there and we need to sign him ASAP. And Batman, I agree with you. I like this move. We've talked about him on our show before. And I think that it's just a great guy to have as depth. He's whether you want to say he's getting older and he's not performing as well anymore. I don't care. He is still a guy that can prove himself and show some characteristics, some strength that a lot of the guys on this team do not have. I mean, just look what he has done in his career. He has had 384 tackles, 100 tackles for loss, 75 and a half sacks, and 172 quarterback hits. Now we'll break it up and just talk about what he did in 2019. In 2020, he was on IR for a good chunk of that. So it just doesn't really give you a good picture if we look at his 2020 stats. But in 2019, he had 47 tackles, seven tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, and 10 quarterback hits. So this is just someone that it can't hurt. It can't hurt to have a guy like Geno Adkins on your defense, especially with the way that the Seahawks are struggling right now and really every aspect of the defense. I like him. I don't think he's going to be around much longer. So I think that if the Seahawks are planning on making a move on him, they have to do it quick. Do you guys agree with Batman fan? Batman, should the Seahawks sign Geno Atkins. Go to the comments right now. Type Y for yes or type N for no. And thank you to our presenting sponsors over at BetUS. They make these videos possible and they are the people that you guys want to use if you are going to be betting at all this season. They've got a great deal right now where if you go to chatsports.com slash bet, use the promo code Seahawks125. If you put up $100, they are going to give you 125% deposit bonus. That means that the $100 that you put up turns into $225. You've got a free $125 to bet with. And if you're thinking about betting on this game, might as well take a peek at it. You got to get your bets in by tomorrow, obviously. But the over-under is set at 52. The 49ers are favorited minus three right now. But if you're feeling like this is going to be a comeback, maybe go ahead and bet on Seattle. I think that it's a good bet. I do think that the Seahawks are going to come up on top in this game. We talked about it in our preview game, but this is a comeback game for Seattle. Take take away the fact that it's a divisional game. They need to win this. They need to change the momentum going on in Seattle. Next question up here on our mailbag show comes in from DX Squid. He says, any update on Trey Brown? And yes, we do have an update. He is still on IR. So we're hoping that he's going to be off next week. That's what Pete Carroll said, but he's not off of it yet. And, you know, Greg Bell, who is a a reporter for the Seahawks, he said that rookie CB Trey Brown and uh, cornerback Nigel Warrior not yet coming off IR. Pete Carroll says Seahawks are hoping at the end of next week. Now it would be a short turnaround from Sunday at San Fran. They are playing the following Thursday against the Rams. So we're going to keep you updated on Trey Brown, but no, he is currently not off IR and we will not be seeing him in tomorrow's game. Next question comes in from King uh, Vegeta. He says, who should the hashtag Seahawks use as their number one corner through trade or otherwise? 
So let's start with just the guys in the room. And I know the cornerback question keeps getting brought up and you guys keep asking about it. So that's why we keep talking about it. If you want to talk about something else, don't ask about the cornerbacks. But if we're talking about the current guys on the roster, I said this in the preview video, I'd like to see Sidney Jones. And I think that it's actually a good possibility that we might even see him this week we are not getting the performance we need to see by Trey Flowers we're barely getting it from DJ Reed I mean we're not really but I think that when you've got guys like Sidney Jones on your bench and you know bless Austin even like these are people that you've got to test out and if the Seahawks aren't planning on signing or trading for anyone they've got to be willing to move around some things on their roster and make do with what they have but if we are talking trades, a couple guys that have come up ever since the Richard Sherman signing, What now that that's gone, some trade things have come up, including Stefan Gilmore. Now, I've said before, Stefan Gilmore is obviously an elite corner in this league. Is it the perfect match for Seattle? I actually don't think so. I just think you don't want to get an injured guy who can't play till at least like week six, week seven. And even if he can, you never know how injuries linger. So for me, this isn't the best choice for Seattle, but is it a better choice than starting Trey Flowers? Absolutely. It's just, it sucks to get a guy and then have to wait, see how the injury prolongs, see when he can get back. So I wouldn't necessarily go with him, but I do know that a lot of you guys are interested in him. And obviously he is one of the most dominant cornerbacks in the league. Another guy that keeps getting brought up is Cameron Dantzler. Now this could be an interesting option because he's made some interesting comments uh, talking about how unhappy he is over at the Vikings, just not getting the playing time that he has expected. And so he obviously comes to Seattle and he could get a full start where he's playing all the time. And so I think that there's kind of some incentive for him to want to come to Seattle. I kind of like this idea. You know, he's a younger, he's young. So you don't know exactly what you're getting out of him. But I think that this could potentially be a good option for Seattle. And there's a ton of options to choose from. And we've talked about it in a lot of our videos. So go check out some of our other ones. But right now with the current situation, who should the number one cornerback be for the Seahawks? You can choose a guy that's available in free agency. You can choose someone on the Seahawks roster, or you can make a trade in your opinion. Give us your thoughts in the comments. Next question in our mailbag show today is coming in from... Jacoby Bell, how much impact does having Eskridge on the field actually make? Since he got hurt, it doesn't be, look like we even run the same offense. And this is a good question. What kind of impact is D. Eskridge going to have? It's hard to tell. We haven't seen enough to really make a clear statement. You know, he got hurt after that week one game. So we can look at preseason. We can look at that one week. But we can say, hey, what he has done and the little bit of time that we have seen him is impressive. Now, I'm not saying that D.S. Gridge is, is going to come in and solve all the problems on the Seahawks offense. It's not going to happen. Is he a good addition for the team? Absolutely. And I think that he's just a guy that's going to be really fast, a fly sweep guy that just can help out the team and provide speed, kind of be utilized in different ways. I like what I've seen from D. Eskridge. We're going to have to wait to kind of really understand what we're going to get out of him and how it's actually going to affect the way the Seahawks offense runs. But tomorrow's a big game. It is the first divisional game of the season for the Seahawks. They are going on the road to take on the San Francisco 49ers. And this is the comeback game. I'm telling you now, I don't care that the 49ers are favorites. I think Seattle's going to come up on top. I think Russell Wilson is going to have a dominant game. And I really think we're going to see not a great performance by the defense, but I think we're going to see some improvement. And I think we're going to see, my fingers are crossed, I think we're going to see some shifting in the cornerback room. At least I hope so. Maybe we'll get to see Jones out there. But right now, let me know, what do you guys think the score is going to be? Go to the comments right now. Predict this week four matchup right now.